Hi everyone, and welcome to today's Woodworking Wisdom. Today, we're going to look at the bowl saver. Why? It's the right time of year in reality, especially Northern Hemisphere. Moisture's dropped out the trees, it's cooler, so I can rough turn the bowls, leave them over winter, come back in the spring, they'll be nice and dry. Why do we want to rough turn them to allow them to dry and shrink? So we can use material that normally you probably couldn't get. So I don't know what it is about when you start wood turning, you start with a little bowl. They will get bigger. They don't work, you know, it's just that 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 seem, you know, we seem to have that thing that we want to make a bigger, bigger bowl. Downside with making a bigger bowl, you fill more shavings into the waste bag, unless you've got a way of taking the middles out. So what we're going to look at today will show you that aspect of how we can take the centers out, get more out of your materials. Maybe that's an ecological thing. We need to be thinking about what we're doing, making better use of. If you've got some really pretty material, wouldn't it be nice to get four or five bowls out of that instead of one? So this gives you the scope. We've got a bit of sycamore here. So we have four bowls out of one. Yeah, okay, they're rough term. We've got to finish them off. But give me the scope that we can make more than one bowl quite easily, okay? So let's just drop that out of the way. Today we've done a little bit of work. So we've got our piece of sycamore. This is 16 inch diameter. Um, and then someone's going to ask me, aren't they? So let's have a quick look. Oh, six and a half inch deep. So it's quite a large piece of wood. I've already done the outside. I've turned that. I've made sure I've got a little bit of prep because my idea today really is to focus on what we're going to do with taking the clawing out. So we've got our blank, we've mounted it. Now, when you mount it, you need to make sure what you put it on is substantial enough to hold it. That's important. This is going right back to basics. So I've got six screws in this holding it. Small face plate because I want to core in and take more bowls out. If I have a bigger face plate, that's going to block it. So again, that's things to think about. If you look at doing this, what do you have as a face plate? Is that going to interfere with maybe where you want to be? Are those screw holes going to interfere? So smaller, maybe longer screws near the centre. That can be good. Let's just drop this just under here so we can hold it, so we can show you what's going on. Footways, and I said, I've already turned the outside. So we've roughed out our shape, very simple bowl shape. Big foot. The bigger you can have, the better. And I prefer solid foot for this to close down onto it. That's going to give me something I can work with later when this is shrunk. If I leave it as a recessed foot, it's going to swing to an oval. I've got less I can play with. I can always make it smaller. It's difficult to put it back. So it's one of those scenarios, maybe big foot. So on here, I've got a set of chuck jaws. I need to check things are going to fit. I hope they do because we worked all around this. So I have a set of Colossus. Okay. Believe it or not, this is what Colossus were invented for. It's very purpose, nice big bowl, I want to wrap out. So they're on there. Again, stainless steel jaws, fantastic to work with damp material. So if it's wet, it's going to cut easier. This actually is not that wet. It's a bit disappointing. I was hoping it's going to be, you know, get a free shower. But no, I'm going to stay dry this afternoon. Steph's now looking apprehensive here. Look, all right. So no, it's pretty dry, Steph. Don't panic, all right? So... We've done that. We've got our foot. We know that fits on. So even before I've taken the bowl off of the face plate, I check it against the chuck. And that will be any bowl I make. I try and double check. It's easier to double check and readjust it whilst you've still got it on the face plate. Just going to bring oh, the headstock in a little bit now. That's better. We can put our bowl up on here. Into there. Now I rough the bowl out. I'm trying to think of which day. Get this done. Next thing I just want to check, just going to line up. So I've double checked this morning. I've taken the lathe speed on the belt setting back down to lower setting. It's a big piece of wood. I want to make sure it's running slower. So we can bring the speed up gently. I'm checking how we are running on the outside shape. If you were going to do a bowl and it's dry material, you don't need to do the rough turn process. Maybe you could actually still, you're going to bowl nest it, exactly the same sequence. But you'd sand and polish your outside. You could have that done. This stage, ready to go. All right. Headstock, just back a little bit because we've got to bring the other bit in now. We know that runs all right. I'm going to take my screws out. 
one. Oh, nearly. Catch it. On the floor. Uh, okay, so we'll just take these out. We know it fits. We could leave the faceplate on. But I find it gets in the way for the nester. So, or the bowl saver. If we take that out, we'll put it out the way. We'll grab the one on the floor so I don't stand on it. Just clearing the light bed. We are literally a quarter of an inch. I'm going to play around with the middle first. So I've already set a few things up. I want to be able to remount this and do the other bowls. Face plate's going to get in the way with what we want to do. So into the middle, I've got a set of dividers just to scribe out a recess so we can use a set of C-jaws. Oh, girls, let's bring our cable down a bit. Got my scribe line there. Working from the centre. Coming out gently. Going to turn over, working back towards my line. A little bit more. The sycamore has got a bit of spalting to it. Uh, that'll be nice and light. We'll tear out a lot. That'll do for that one. Just get my skewer out the rack. Just want to do recess. Right, a dovetail shape. Nice and firm with the chisel. Don't want any bouncing on this. I've still got one area to work on. I'm going to bring up a bit more gal gal. Gently coming up. Just want to back cut or pull cut across that surface. Let's have a look. Check everything's on there nice and tight. A lot of momentum on this which will unwind it unless I've locked the chuck on. We just want our chuck here. Just going to close the C jaws down. I want to check if we can get into there, expand them up. All right, so that's prepped now. We've done a little bit more work. So this is about being able to reverse it in a second. Now I've got our recess. You have leveled off. I just want a little bit more depth. So, using my steer, just going to rock it back and forwards to get a bit more depth. The bit in the middle we've left, that's not going to interfere at this side. That gives me a remounting point if I need it. There's a dot. Okay, so this is about being able to bring the chuck back in in a second. So, we're up to there. Let's move the tall rest around. Move that out. Okay, our bow nester. I've got the larger of the two. And I know we've done something on this earlier in the year a little bit. Now, I put it all together, which is a little bit of a shame, but it takes a little bit of assembly. So I've just dropped it in place. So things that need assembling, let's have a quick go, move of things. So these are just finger tight. I wanted you to understand what this made us. So the Max 4 has an aluminium machine table, which is cursed. You have your rod that goes into a tool stem post, a collar, which allows you to adjust the height and lock it off. That's quite an important part. That bar comes through to a washer plate and a lock screw on the top. You get the idea this all pivots. You have a support bar where the tool goes. So on here, we have that collar I just said about. I can adjust that. There's two grub screws, and that's a magic word. There are two to make sure that it's locked and stayed at that height. That drops in. Cutters, we have three sizes. All right, there is a smaller version of this which will have two. All right, so the cutters, there are different sizes depending on what you want to try and do. Smaller bowl, smaller, smaller knife or cutter. We're going to start with the bigger one. I have 
embrace tip in the front, which is a hardened steel, hold its edge better. This has a reinforcing bar on the top. Right, so that will fit in. Let's just drop that back in. So this will go into this holder. I've got to slide it and I'll try not to undo all the bolts totally. This collar on the top, we can do up. You can see I've got my big Allen key. Three-point fitting locks that in nicely. So we've got a few other things just to assemble. You'll get the idea of what's happening hopefully in a second. Let's check lock that down. This is designed to bring my knife up, fit through that gate system. I think you can just see that in the camera. Let's bring you in a little bit here. So the gate's over here. This has a bearing. This will move. We've got our movement for the knife. I've got to lock it into the banjo at the moment. We're obviously facing the wrong way around. All right, so that will slide. I'll come right back out here in a minute. A few other things I just need to put in. Tail stock support. So we can undo this. And I better go over one last thing before we do this bit. Let's just undo that. I think you can see. Let me just see if I can bring the tail stock. Again, I'm jumping one little thing which I did earlier. And I've already explained to you we've set the, the tool post. I've got that collar. I've set it off the centre. So the cutter tip is fractionally behind or above the centre point. All right. It's difficult to see on the camera, but the cutting tip here, if we go camera free there, Steph, you probably got that. That's our centre point on here. All right. We're just above. So by moving that collar up or down, I can lower or raise the height depending on the height of the lathe. But ideally, you want the cutter. Ideally, dead central or just above will be good. All right. Don't have it below. It's going to drag or anything else. And that's an important part when you set up. Make sure that cutter heart is right. Easiest way you can do it, centre. All right. That's good. Let's move this one back round. Let's get an idea where this is. I want to go spacer in there. So it should probably be that. I'll come in from underneath. I'm going to load this this way. Just easier for me to hold. I'm my way, Steph. Let me just do my bolt up. Get that in. Last thing I can add while we're just assembling is a section of threaded rod. This is designed to fit through the tail stock, which you guys can't quite see. Maybe kind of tear a little bit. All right. Let me just jump around here. I'm going to. All right. Hopefully, guys, you won't get too dizzy. All right. And I'll move you back in. So the threaded rod will actually screw into the back of that section that I've put in. Well, we can put it in. It's useful to have. It's adding a bit more strength. That goes in. The wing nut will go up. I've got my more saber fitting. Believe it or not, I've worked with it like that, and it works quite nicely. So let me just move this back round. Steph, you've got a question. What have you got? So it's not really a question, but um, Nigel Oram has said thank you to Jason for your advice um you gave him to buy a three mil beading tool he managed to get one that was symmetrical at harrogate so thank you for your advice yes. Yes. sorry sorry got something right sorry. all right we do try hopefully you got all right and you picked it up that will be i know what that is that's an actually ours tool fluted parting tool okay so i hope you all right hope you enjoy right okay so where were we? All right, now we're playing around with this. Now, as a thing, if we can move it back a little bit and trying to create a bit of space. When we set this up, I want it as near to there as I can get. Just checking where we are on the overhead camera because it's, it's quite a big thing now. Now in here, this has got a certain amount of movement on this section on the back here. You can see there's a cutout on here. I can slide that along. I can also position the banjo in different places. So as much as this will take, I think it's classed as a hemisphere, right? Quarter circle. By positioning the middle back or forwards or off center, I can change where I get with my cut. So as much as it will follow that curve, I don't have to take a quarter section at the moment. And we're gonna try and show you this. This is the next magic bit where I am, okay? Oh, my God, there's so many things to think about on this. All right, next little bit. And this is on offer 
at the moment until the 27th of November 2023. All right. Got to put the date in this, I've been told. All right. Now, this is what we class as a light kit, or I class it as a laser kit because we can. I don't know, Steph, you can put your go to free formula. Right? I can draw a light. Okay. No, the laser doesn't cut the wood out, Steph. I can see you looking excited over here now. No, the, I've still got to do some work. All right. So, this is designed to go on the top. All right. So, into there. I've had I've read the reviews for this, and there's a few things, and I've gone back to the guys I know and kind of said, look, this wobbles a little bit. And that was one of the reviews. It got a little bit. But actually, then having put the laser in place or the light pen, what does it do? I can line it up with the cutting tip, which you guys probably can't quite see at the moment. Now, I can also move it round a little bit. I've lost my pen. Look, there we go. It is on. I've got to push the button in. I can say, all right, so now I'm just touching the tip. All right, so I can see it touches the tip. Now, at this stage, with where we are, I don't know if I want to do this, but okay. We've got there. If I have my bar where it is, Oh, you wouldn't believe I went to art college, would you? <laughs> right? We'd cut out that funny section. We'd be a bit cleaner than my pen line, right? But we would cut that little bit out. That's it. Okay, let's just pull the laser back up before I burn. All right. All right, so if we move things forward and I adjust it on that back section, so I'm swinging it so it's more parallel, let's come forward a bit more. Got to lift my knife back into there and clear the front. How much width do I want on this side? I've got to start to think about, all right? So probably camera free a little bit there. I'm looking at the wall thickness on the outside edge here. I don't want to be too thin. I've even got a little bit of wax either side. So that's good. Let's come over a bit. I can bring it that way a little bit more. That's not bad there. Now I want to see where my tip's going to go. Now without the laser or light kit, you get this in the box. Okay, this gives you a measurement of where you're going to finish by laying it on. Now, if I put it sideways there, the center point needs to go with the middle here. The bottom point here is the bottom of the bowl, but actually it's the base of the outside of the blank. This allows a 20 mil thickness of the bottom of the bowl, okay? So that's telling me I've got 20 mil. So at the moment, I'm too far forward here, so I'm gonna wiggle this back. I'll bring my tail stop back as well. I'm bringing the center point back. All right. And this is difficult to kind of explain, but actually by arcing that back, I've moved back on my paper alignment bit or the stiff card. Let's go back a little bit more. Okay. All right, that gets us 20 mil. Now, like I said, this comes in the box on the bigger one. It's laminated. It's nice. All right. I did a shop demo with this and went, oh, wow, this makes it so much easier. So the light indicator, if I put it back on, let's get our dot. Let's check it's working. Yeah, okay. Just lining the dot up with the tip. Now I want to see where we're going to come down our bowl. So at the moment, I've got a point there. There. All right. So I could even actually, if we want, project this. Now, normally I wouldn't draw on this with my marker, right? This is about giving you a guide of where, but this allows you to accurately see where you're going to be cutting. I'm going to join the dots up for you. That's my cutout shape now, right? That bigger one there, down to there. That's our section internally that we've cut. Well, actually, I've still got just from using this as a setup. Oh, wow. 45 mil and thickness in the bottom. So we could come forward. That'll do. So I've just changed my bottom point now by another 15, 20 mil. All right. Staff's looking worried now. Yes. Which. I brought it down a bit lower so we can see where we are. Now, next thing I think we'll just do main camera just briefly for a second. Right? There's nothing worse than buying something like this. I've got an older system, not by the same manufacturer, more freehand. 
and you make this lovely big outside bowl that you want to do. You want to call the middle out and you go through the bottom of the biggest bowl that you're actually trying to take the centre out of. You make it the most glorious funnel, but you can't measure it. This, oh, wow. I can see exactly where I'm going to go. So I put my laser dot back onto there. Now I said to you, this does wiggle a little bit. I can line it up. Even if I wiggle this about back and forward, I'm still lining up with the cutter tip because it's six mil wide. I can draw my laser line down through and see exactly where I'm going. I've taken the guesswork out of this. I've got an exact point of knowing where we are. That's great. Lock up, lock up the tail stop, lock the banjo. Those three things now are locked in place. So by adjusting the setting on the back here where that ring is cut out and moving it left or right, that will affect it by positioning the center post slightly back will affect what I get as a curve, where it's going to line up. Adding the light or the laser pen, wow, just takes that guesswork out of it. Next thing then we want, handle. That's got to go on here. I better undo the grub screw, look. One. That one. That one. Drop it on. Pin these back up. All right. Double check everything. Better check the headstock were and tailstock. Let's do that up because we're there now. Just doing that. Okay. Speed wise. Let's start slow. It's easier to increase. Bring our speed up. We don't want this running too fast. Okay. Next thing. Handle. Ooh, a bit heavier on the belt. Okay. Control on that little bit. Just, can you go full camera a minute? So if you guys can see, I can do this one finger. Okay. So you don't need a lot of weight on the handle. Right. Nice and gentle movement. Gently going for Got in, not in a hurry, clearing the way. So as you get deeper, I've got to clear that way more. They'll start to block. So the waist is coming up the top here. What a noise. Right, just checking the belt tension. Need to just grab. Staff's got a question over. I've just got to jump in front of the camera because I need to get my thing on from the bench. I need the brush. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Right. Steph? Yeah, so... Um, you just want to break, don't you? I could see it. I'm just going to do... No, I'm good. Well. The right. gentleman Woodturner is asking what, if you're on a high or a low belt? 
what sorry high or a low belt tension belt tension the, as in belt setting yeah low low need to get more torque out the motor other thing which i'm just playing around with on here so that's got another one right i've got a check few. your tension on your belt because you don't want belt slip too much make sure you're clearing the shavings low speed that's gonna be another question in a minute let's give you an idea where i am just to give you an idea i'm now running at 259 yeah. Right, so 300 maximum would be good for this. Wet wood will cut easier. So you're going to get shavings out. That's going to be easier to work with as well. So, yeah. So I've got a few questions. Uh, Cliff has asked, how hot is the cutter going to get? If you keep your speed lower, you're not going to get as hot. This clip I can touch, but yes, it is hot, and you need to be aware that it is going to get hot. It is a good question, right? But slower speed is more in control. Brush is better than touching it with your fingers. Okay. So consider that, okay? Um, so a couple of people have asked, um, we've got M Malcolm and Ward have said, how come you're not doing smaller bowls first? You've got that issue then of trying to hold it. So this way I've done the recess in the middle so we can remount it on the track, do that. I'd always work with, I do know some people that do the smaller one first and then work up pro, just different ways of working. All right. So you can do smaller yeah, first and then work your way up to the big ones. And um, major thing that's definitely good with that. So let's just go back to right, that laser kit. You've obviously got the free settings for the different size knives. So you alter that about, right? It's so that light kit. Now, if you're going to do that and you're going to start with your smaller one, this becomes invaluable really because you can project exactly where you are going to go. There is nothing worse than getting it wrong. All right? And like I say, I have got a bowl that I've got at home that my mum's got that I went for the bottom of. And I mean, something like a hundred pound piece of Australian beer years ago, 20 inch diameter. I managed to repair it, but the very bit I called it out with, I ended up using to repair it. I didn't save myself anything apart from a lot of time. So this makes life easier. All right? So doing it this way, sorry. If you take out the inside bowl now, yep. you would then mount it to a chuck, turn so then a I foot. Can put it back on the chuck, we're going to do. And then you turn a foot. Yep, we can put another foot back on straight away, turn it. And then if you'll... you go small and first, you've got the scenario of you can't put your feet back on as easily. You can do your rough turn thing. We can mount them all on a jam chuck with a foam drive. Something like that will work. Yeah, but all then right. you would turn that back around and take another yep. bowl out. Okay. So with this, I can actually now remount it if I need to. Let's see if we can get this one back out then. Back in. Turn my speed dial. Now, things you guys can't see as well. I think stuff goes my own camera in a minute. I'm not putting a lot of weight on this handle. Give me an idea. One handed. Too hard. So I go on monitor, that's the shaving blocking a little bit. Yeah, do come around. Getting nearer. First to clear out. Yeah, I'm still got that one handle and handle. So we're getting nearer. Okay. So good. Now, other good thing which I did set up was try to make sure, and it gives you an eye for a bit more to go because we've got a lot of space in here still. All right. So, mad staff jump. On here, we're having everything near with the tool post and the table set quite parallel and as near as I can get. 
when that does come out, no, it can't come all the way out. Can't bounce around the rim. So that actually blocks that coming out. Now, we've got to get it out of the way, haven't we? Let's undo a few things. Some tail stock that were there. Three things to undo. I want to come back just a little bit more. There it goes. All right. So we have the first one. Let's drop that out. Move that over a minute. Big one. Down to here. We're in. A bit now. Let's try and have a quick look. Oh. Dance around things. I am. My sight across. I'm down to there. So I've got a good maybe 20 mil in the bottom still. All right. So I'm just measuring side sight and across the rim. I can see where my thickness is. So that's given me good depth to get all the way down through. Small stub in the center. Not too bad. So I'm going to drop that one. Move things about now. Let's see where we can get you quickly. All right. So undo. Got to change shot for this. That out. I want this out of the way as well. So let's have our knockout bow. I've got it nice and secure, so I need to knock it back. Hopefully. We can go. That'll help, won't it? Okay, got a lift now. We'll bring him back in place in a second. Check where we are there. Bringing our chuck jaws up to our recess. Something sat somewhere there. What happened there? I see. Expand them in. I'm a white stuff. Just dancing with things and then we'll get to you. What you got? No, Ward has asked, how wet is the wood? This is pretty dry. All right. It's a bit of a shame. We bought these beginning of the year. We did a, each store had a woodcut demo. So this is sat in the warehouse. If it was wet, these would spring or wouldn't hold like this. They they stick together a bit more. We'd also get a line. So this is pretty dry. I could probably even get away with turning this as a bowl from start to finish and not have an issue of it cracking. But try and get bits of wood six to eight inch deep to do this in. It's going to be wet. Going to have some moisture to it. So this is giving me the scope. I can dry it and make it usable. It's a normal scenario with trying to rough turn or get a bigger bowl. It's trying to find the materials in a usable state that they're not going to crack. So we've remounted that, that cone from the inside. We've expanded it in that set of jaws. We want to level across here. Let's get that robust rust up. A little bit off there. That's given me a guide. Now I've got the chuck out. I've just set up a measurement. And again, we're coming down to the centre. So I want to see where we are with there. Level that back. Coming into the middle now. Let's lose it. We've got a flat shoulder there. We can, we need to tidy this up a bit. Let's go. I'm just going gouge size up really just to give me something a bit more usable, a bit bigger. Get the smaller gouge for my finishing. So I flew on this side, we're driving up round. Rust the bubble. Come up a bit. Rust the bubble again, raise our handle. Let's bring that cut up round a bit more.
So the bigger piece of wood, so the bigger diameter, is more likely to shrink more. Across the grain, not lengthwise. So taking that into consideration already, I've allowed that thicker wall thickness. What we're doing now, we're just altering the foot we've got on the base here. And like I said, this is, and this goes back to your question of how wet is it? I don't even think when it was cut, it was that damp. Um, this is a bit of sycamore. I can kind of tell from the colour and the markings, a little bit of spalting in it, a little bit of rot. This has been sat on the floor for quite a while before they've actually cut it. Um, so again, we're doing that thing now, putting the check on. Let's test it's going to fit before we take it off the other side. There's nothing worse than getting to this sort of stage and then finding the chuck won't fit. So again, you could do that process of sand finish if you wanted, if that was dry piece. Put that one on. Up. Check how that is. So we're tight. Okay, we've come oh, down in diameter by quite a bit. So we're going to move bow nester back in. The big knife we've got, probably at this stage, too big. We could use it, it would be longer. So if you had a bowl that was deeper and more pointed towards the centre, you could actually come in. We'll change that clip. I know it's been a while, that's still a little bit warm, but I can hold it, okay? So they will get hot, and that is something you do need to consider when you're moving it about a bit. Next knife down. Put it in. <sighs> Clear out the stop at the back. There's a little groove in here. <sighs> Fills up with wood shavings. Can't imagine where they come from, stuff. Someone has asked, sorry, a little moment ago, um, how long is each cutter? How long? How long? Ooh, okay. All right, let me just try the last bout. I've got the ruler, I remember where it is. I'm trying to think of where it is. The rule is on the floor. Nah, it's down there with the other bowl. I can see where it is. All right. So let's have a quick look on here. So first one. All right, I think you guys can just see on the overhead where I am. All right, bit tricky to measure because obviously they're curved. Oh, that's probably 11, 12 inches back to here where the cut point is. All right, so from the tip, I've almost got a 12 inch depth. That's quite a big curve, and that's a lot of leverage. Middle one from where I am now, come through, get quarter, and you've got to remember we've not got the fixing position. Oh, eight, okay, and then the smaller one is smaller again, all right, so on here, hopefully, got to do the same sort of setup now, we're looking at where we are, got to bring the tail stop back in, it will add a bit of resistance if you like, a bit more support, I'll bring that up, we now want our guide system again, all right? So I'm back to that overhead. I can play with my pin. I'm gonna come here, I've got to lock it in and twist it. There's a rubber bung on the side of the laser. Or oh, that little, uh, let's bring him around, trying to find out where he is. I turned it off, or did I? Yeah. So I've got to get the rubber bung to sit in the right place. All right, so that's there. So I can go from there, I'll come round, where am I coming to? Ooh, if anything, that's not bad. Ooh, tempted to leave it there. So let's just bring that in, bring that off again a minute before running it down. Now on here, I'm just now looking, leaving quite a thick wall thickness. I bet we want to go something thinner. So let's do the same again. Get our dot, where am I coming to? A little bit deep now. So I've moved it towards me. Do you bet I'm worried about it being a bit deep in towards the bottom of the bowl? I brought it back on the collar, but swung it round on that bracket on the back. 
So I haven't done the banjo up at this point. I've done the banjo, but not the tall stem post. Okay. So I can move that about to say, okay, that looks good. So I can adjust this to suit using the back bar up down on here. I'm just tightening up that handle, checking tail stocks locked in place. That's good. Oh, anything else we need to check? I think we're on there. We'll take our speed. Bring them back down again. We were higher speed to turn it. Go careful on that initial bar. Have a clean. It's me. Got to grab screw loose. Okay. <laughs> Noth nothing bad. Now, okay. I'll explain the aspect with that. Um, the handles work loose a little bit on here. I'm just tightening up the grab screws. Why? Because if I keep going, and I had this happen in the shop, I fall on the floor. And it's like trying to find a contact lens at the moment down there. So... We'll try it now, that's better. So slow speed again. Need a clean. <laughs> Going to start the shavings will start to block on the table here where the metal base has got to come up. So I've got to clean those out. I'm just going to speed it a bit slightly slower. Let's clear out. There it goes. Right. Woo. Hi. Good. So. Let's take that out. We've got to change shuck as well. So we do that. I want the C jaws back, so I'll do this all in one. I can move the thing back as well, I hope. Ugh. Okay, so we have that. I take the chuck off. Ugh. I want the C jaws back in. How are we doing on the side camera? I need to check the time. So two. I'm going to drop that down. I'm just trying to push this to try and see if we can get that fair bowl done as well. Let's catch that on there. Better bring it out a little bit. Chuck done up. Which way did I go that way? All right, so we've got the second one. Let me just see if we can get our last one out of that to give you an idea of what we're Rhyming for one, two, knockout bar. Oh, that's it. So we can lift the whole lot out again. Now, again, the tool rest stem, we're not adjusting, so that collar stays in exactly the same place. That doesn't need moving. 
We then did a seat on there. I wonder if we can fit it in a seat. On a gouge. A bow gouge. Okay, I could go with H because I can measure that. So it would help if I put it in the chat properly. That's a bit more equal. So I wasn't sitting, I hadn't pushed her out up with a flat. Okay, right. So we can try. Put on there. This is the only chuck bit I didn't prep for. I did the other two. I wasn't sure how big or small or even time-wise where we were going to get to. So I'm just going to wind this in. Ooh, nearly about where I want to be. So I can bring this out round now. Just fighting with the towel stuck with the handle. Just got enough room to clear that. That's good. Gives us a clean outer again. Not that critical, really, for you're going to rock turn it. Probably something flat. Something straight. Hopefully, that'll be long enough. Let's have a look and check we're going to fit. And how big are we? We need a quarter inch gap with just over diameter. So let's bring it down a little bit. Better. Swap those over so we've got. Can never have enough chucks, can you? My skew. Okay, so small bowl. Let's have a look. It was clean in here before we started this, you know. All right, okay, so let's pick him up. Same position. Drop him in. Move that round. We know we've got to come this way a bit. Let's just bring that up briefly to hold it, make my life a bit easier. Trying to think of what I'm trying to find on the bench now. The only good thing at the moment, the bench isn't covered in wood shavings. Did you get it? No? Okay. No. All right, so we're just done doing three... Collar bolts. Now, again, if you were doing a batch of rough turn bolts, you might actually do them in stages. You might do all the middles, then change this down. So uh, I've got to do this a bit more on the back. I've undone the front one. There you go. Smaller knife right in. Tighten the front one down on this because this is where the main pressure point on this one is. Jam up. That's good. I'll bring these down. Check the handle's not loose again. Now we've got to find our position. Where do you want? 
Bringing that up. Let's undo that bolt again. Go back to the light source. Check where we are with our thing. That's good. Oh, it's like decisions, isn't it? Back a little bit. Nope. So, again, just really looking at, and I can project the line, the red line, the dot comes through. I can see exactly where it is. All right? And I know you guys are going to struggle to see this on the screen, but so much easier to do to draw a line where that arc is actually cutting. That's it. If we moved it back more, we could bring the center point this way a little bit on the banjo. You've got that bracket on the back. We can adjust all those things add up so you can make it a bit more adjustable. Everyone seems to think this has got a cut quarter circle. Oh, no, you can cut shallower. We've got in there, so let's go with it. Check everything's tight. Right. Oh, and let's move the cutter back before we catch it. It's a bit, could have flattened that top off, couldn't I? Look, okay. I'm just playing with the speed with my left hand. Just checking where this one is, look. Got a few things in there. No other thing which you won't really see, you might see on camera one, I lift the handle up. Let me have another look. That was better, wasn't it? All right, a bit more controlled, look. All right. I'll explain it because I'd lost Stephanie for a minute. She, she crawled in behind the TV screen, all worried, I think. Okay. So, <laughs> speed is so important on that. Slow it down on that last stage can be really good. Okay. Oh, we'll take that out. The major thing kind of just covered there a little, a little bit. Let's drop him back in. I've just cleaned the wood shavings off. What I'm using, I'm tending to pick the handle up. That's a weird thing. Everyone seems to think you've got to put your arm over the top. It's actually better lifting it up very slightly. There's a little bit of movement on here. Got to be something to allow it to move. A small gap on here is magnifying down the handle. So I pick it up. That gives me my arm. Move it through. Shortcuts. Don't go too aggressive. Just trying to see if we can find. We're getting some good shavings off it, even though this is quite dry. Clear that waste out. All those little things are important. Slow speed. Don't go too fast. Even on the small bowl, I'm only up to about 400. Too fast, you're not going to control it, okay? So, let's have a lift out. Oh, we have... On there, what have we got here? Wall thickness now. Some of you guys, have we got double-enders? Where are they? Down there, Okay. And this whole thing of being able to see it, that was maybe one of the reasons I, I kind of suggested, could we do this as an author? I can project my thicknesses. I can start looking at this. Oh, you can, oh, you can down there. So I can see what I've got here. <laughs> Which camera's that on, Steph? Is that the overhead? All right, okay. I'm just going to block your view a minute, guys. I'm sorry. All right. Might be better. All right. So in here, we can then start to measure what thickness we get. Stop laughing. All right, okay, so 
I can easily work with, right? Measuring and working up through. So that laser guide or that light, whatever you want to class it as, gives me the accuracy to know exactly where I am, which is great. So from one piece of wood, small bowl, we can still do. Again, we've got a center mounting, we can put it on to do a foot. Oh. Yeah. Uh, four. Okay, we could have done this a bit now. I could have skimmed out a bit if they were drier. But it's giving me the scope of you can make something more bowls. Everyone loves going bowling. All right, Steph's got a question over here. Look, okay. Yeah, so I've got a question here from Sleeping Dog. He's asked, is this is the Max Four simply a design upgrade of the Max Three, or are the knives are the knives quite different shapes? Okay, the or knives, sizes. Are, knives are bigger from memory on the four. Okay, that's definitely a bigger knife than what you would get on the three. The other thing I would say, definitely on the four, and it depends on lathe size. Make sure you have something two horsepower. <laughs> I need to go to the gym. I mean, that's what it is. Okay, so oh, let's bring it back in. So we've got our bowls. We've seen that. Oh, the nice thing with the four. And you got it, Steph. That table's machined. Beautifully done. It's flat. Everything locates. You can get different tool stems. Oh, the nice thing I definitely like with a four. And yes, it's a bit more money. You get a decent box. Everything has a location when you finish. You can put it away. There's a lid. You can put it out the way, store it, get it back out, set it up. Fantastic. All right, so everything has a location. We've got 30 mil stem in here. So bigger lathe we had, um, things like the Robust. So all those little things start to add up. That's why this one's a bit more expensive. But the knives are definitely bigger on this, and they will do bigger size. Uh, having talked to Dan, who owns Wood Cut, they're looking at making a bigger one again. Really? This is pretty big, okay? This will do 16-inch easily, all right? That's quite a big bowl to put on here. So the knives do become part of it. Obviously, we said we can sharpen them. Diamond file, all right? So diamond card across the top. Um, um, uh, I had it. Uh, it's probably normally in my back pocket, okay? But we can diamond card across the top up that face just to keep them sharp all right and then look after them don't throw them in that's what i love about the box you've got somewhere to put them back in when you've used them instead of them hitting one another so they are working trying to keep sharp let's see all right like i said the other major thing and it's a bit crude in my some people say oh, it's a metal bar with that goes in that gives us a way of so I, it hit my boots all right using that laser dot as a guide of exactly where we're going to cut out. That takes the guesswork out of it. And I know when I did a shop event, that was the one thing that I kind of went, oh, wow, that's that's so much more useful than I thought. All right? Yes, I've read the reviews, there's a little bit of play, but it lines up with your dot on the cutting tip. So that just allows you to lay it out, give yourself a good guide, all right? Easier to do than the card templates. I'm not saying the card templates don't work, but that's a bit more accurate. It takes the guesswork out. And like I said to you, when I started this, I've got a bowl that I go and look at when I go to my mum's and go, oh, my God. And it looks great. But I've got that whole thing that I know that I actually cut straight through the bottom of it. I had to use the bit that I wanted to cone out the middle to repair it. It's a bit sickening in my I didn't save anything in a lot of time, whereas actually that has a setup, being able to measure it, get more accurate. Wow. All right. So you can get more at bowl blanks, simple as that. So that means, if you like, more return for your making. So I'm going to start to sign off. Now, we do have, all right, I got told I had to do this, right? So the, the light kit is on offer until the 27th of November, 2023, in case you're watching this next year, okay? So that's there. It's a free offer. It's on now already. So if you're interested on either of the kits, it is there, okay? Hopefully you've enjoyed. A bit of a different session, not so much... Uh, Make for Christmas, maybe things you want for Christmas. I don't know. Okay. Hopefully, like I say, a few ideas. Steph, you got any more questions? Think we're all right? No more questions, but thanks for having me today, Jace. Fantastic. Good. 
So we will see you soon. We've got more woodwork and wisdom coming up. Thank you all very much for your time. Bye then.